What is going on friends? We like wooden crates, but we like the ocean crates even more. Today we're fishing in Terraria for the first time and we wanted to take you along for the trip. So grab your fishing tackle and we'll meet you in the ocean biome. All right, so first things first, to start fishing in Terraria, you need to get yourself a fishing pole and some bait. To catch bait in Terraria, you can destroy plants and bushes using the pickaxe and there is a chance that grasshoppers, grubs, worms, and other insects will spawn. Use your net to catch them. Bait power varies depending on the bait. You can also catch butterflies and other flying insects for bait. Wow, 50% bait power on that butterfly. Now there are a couple potions that you can use for fishing as well. One of them is the crate potion that boosts your crate reward chance. There is a fishing potion that increases your fishing power. And lastly, there is a sonar potion that allows you to see what fish are in the water. We haven't tried the sonar, but we're looking forward to trying that one. We're super excited to see that we already caught an ocean crate on our first day, and we got ourselves an inner tube, so let's go for a float. Now in normal terraria fashion, it's not like you can just do one thing at a time. So as we were fishing out in the ocean biome, King Slime showed up after the slime pole event. And next thing you know, we're battling King Slime. King Slime delivered us a slime hook. What is this? So after our ocean biome experience, we headed back to town to open up all of the crates and to try out this slime hook. Wow, this thing is pretty interesting. Definitely unique compared to the other hooks that we've come across. Does anybody use this? And after that, we headed out to the jungle biome and we were super excited to find out that we found a fiberglass fishing pole in one of these jungle chests. What a big score that is. We caught some iron crates, wooden crates, and even a jungle crate. So we've really enjoyed fishing so far, and we look forward to making some little fishing huts in all of these different biomes in the near future. The jungle biome is just such a nice looking biome in this game. I mean, the green, the torch light, I mean, the water, it's just such a cool looking game. Hey, there it is, our first jungle crate ever in our Terraria experience. Let's go! I believe this also might have been the first time we were using a crate potion, so it did seem to make a difference. We then headed back to our base once again to open all of the wooden crates, iron crates, and that jungle crate. We found ourselves an egglet, accessory and an anklet of the wind, but we've already made lightning boots, so we aren't sure if we need these valuable items. So, so far fishing in Terraria, we've learned that you can find a lot of cool items or resources that help you in your Terraria journey by fishing. Now, it's really cool that you don't need to fish, but it is a really cool alternative source to find items and resources that you might need. So we've received a lot of feedback about just keeping our items in some sort of organized fashion back at our base. And we have to say we genuinely appreciate this comment because there are a ton of items and it's easy to lose things in Terraria. So keep your stash, you know, figured out, organized with good names for your chests. It makes a huge difference. Awesome. Oh, that's pretty cool. We found ourselves a little pet turtle. So with all the fish that we caught, we decided to obviously cook all this food up so that we have our stat bonus buff properties active. One thing we have to say is, for the majority of this game we've played so far, we've only ever really used the buff a little bit because we've never had food items. So thankfully, fishing has showed us that this is a great alternative source and sustainable way to have this buff active pretty much all the time. 
After cooking all that food, we were curious to see if we could find a place that we could fish in the sky. We came across Floating Island, and inside the chest we found our first Star Fury sword. This sword is pretty cool. I'm gonna blame my lack of accuracy on the fact that I'm in the sky and there's low grav. <laughs> After leaving Floating Island, we were able to find a spot to fish in the sky biome, and we started our journey fishing here. This was also our first experience with harpies. Um, we've seen a little bit about making wings with the feathers as well as some of the other ingredients, but thankfully we know where to find harpies now and how to get feathers, so that was a big bonus. While we were fishing in the sky biome, we found our first damselfish. We also caught a lot of bombfish here as well. We do think that the crate potion is definitely a valuable thing to be using when fishing. We still need to explore with the sonar potion as well as the fishing potion more, but we were really curious about the crate potion and it did not disappoint. Oh cool, a zephyr fish. What is this for? and our fishing journey turned into survival when all of a sudden the blood moon rose. We've never seen this zombie merman before, but once we killed him, we got this blood rainbow. Pretty, pretty cool. We're not sure if this is going to be used in like a crafting recipe in the future, but the bow is actually very cool. Unfortunately, it's just pretty weak. And that just about concludes our first fishing adventure in Terraria. We look forward to fishing in the underworld in the future and doing some angler quests. Now, we do have a question for you. Where is your favorite spot to fish? We explored a couple different biomes, we caught a bunch of different fish, as well as all of these different crates. And we have to say, it's a lot of fun and we look forward to doing it again in the future. From B at Friendly Frenzy Games, Peace.